Hey there, this is Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is all about teaching tips for new college instructors and ed tech tutorials as well. So go ahead and subscribe below if that's something that interests you. Today is my newest installment on my Canvas LMS tutorial series. I've already covered pages, discussions, assignments, and modules. So you'll see that in the playlist I'll link below later on. But today I'm talking about smaller elements of Canvas that can make a big difference in your teaching. So I do recommend watching the whole video through because I'm not going in any specific order as far as what tools I'm going through. Before we get into the elements that will help with group work and fast course design, let's talk about how we can easily and visually interconnect different pages in your website. And so this is the dashboard where I have two different courses and I'll show you how I design these later on in the video. But when you have a particular course, you know, this is the home page. You see here that there's this click here image and when they click on it, it goes to the getting started page where it has like a checklist of things to do before uh, they start the course. And so to create that, it's actually very simple. So if we go back to the home page and edit it, any image that you add onto a page can be linked to another page in your LMS. So I have this image here and this image here. So once you have an image, and I'll show you how to create one very easily, you'll go ahead and click on it, and then you want to go link to URL. And then you can insert the URL of the page that you want linked to it. Okay? Um, you can also see here, so links to other content. So let's say you wanted this page, this image, to be linked to the page called, you know, Meet Your Instructor. Now that connection has been made. Okay, you saw that light up because now there's a connection. When you click over it, you see the Meet Your Instructor is showing. So it shows where it is that connects to it. I don't want that to actually be the case. So now the front page is linked on the image. Okay, and I, I, I saw that by clicking Link to URL and it shows you what link currently already exists. So as you see here, if you click on that image and you do Link to URL, you see the URL that has been included here. If I don't want it to be linked to that, I can just click remove link here. All right, so to add or to create an image, very simple. You know, so here, the start here button, I use Canva to create my graphics. Uh, and I have a whole video on how I use Canva when I'm teaching. I'll link that below. But if you go here and I've created just, this is an Instagram post, so it's a square. And you go down here to text and you can see these combinations of font that already exist you might find one that really appeals to you, right? And so let's say just for an example here, you can do this one. You click it and it goes on here. You can resize it and then just change it to, you know, start, change that down. Here, and you have that. Obviously, you can make the color darker so it's easier for students to see. You can match it to your mascot, for example. Uh, but now you have a Start Here button. You go ahead and click Download, and you download it. I would just do it as a JPEG so it's a smaller file. And once you have that down in your you know, documents on your actual computer, you just go ahead, Images, and upload a new image. And you choose a file on your computer. You can put it into a specific folder on your page and then you add it straight into the text box okay and so if let's say you want to add it here you just click the embed image and go ahead and find it in your folder once it's there like i said you click onto it and you go ahead and link it to anywhere on the website so this makes it very easy to interconnect different pages together now for group work i mentioned this tool briefly in my discussions tutorial i believe but here's a tool that you're gonna to use to do online group work. And it's this people page right here. When you go to it, you'll see all your students listed on this page. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and see you know, groups and you can add a group set. And so this is the umbrella group. So let's say for example, that you're gonna have your students do a group project in week two where they have to research a certain topic. And so you can put the topic name as a group set you can allow students to sign up themselves, but it might just be easier to split students into, you know, okay, five groups of six, okay? 
um, require group members to be in the same section, so in the same course. And then go ahead, you can choose to create the groups manually if you want to. So we'll go here and split students into five groups. You can assign a group leader if you want or not. And so now it randomly assigned the students for you. So as you can see, there are no more students left because all of them have been added to these groups. So I won't open it up because then you can see my students. But as you can see, there's five, five, six, six, and six. So divided it evenly in that sense. But what you can do as well is you can say, okay, I'm gonna create a group set. And so maybe this is unit one prep activity. And then now you create the groups manually. So you click save here. Now all the, the student names will be on the left and you can go ahead and add a group. So let's say, you know, keep it easy, group one. And you can keep creating groups that way. And then now when you, on the left here, you just click the plus sign and you can assign them to whatever groups you want, the individual students. On the right here, you can go ahead and click the ellipses and you can click randomly assign students if you wanna do that instead of doing it manually. Um, and you can also clone a group set in case you wanna use it for different reasons. And just so you know, I have a video about designing group projects that students enjoy. So it's basically my process of, of designing an actual activity that's a group project. I'll go ahead and link that video below as well in the description. If you're teaching more than one section of a course, then this is the essential tool for you because it allows you to copy and paste between two courses or more easily and quickly. So how this works, first you're gonna to go to the course that has the material that you want copied into another one. So for example, if you've already created assignments in this first section and you wanna make sure that it's included in the second one, you can go here and if you click the ellipses, you can go ahead and says copy. Okay, and you're gonna copy it to the second section of your course, right? And so I, that's the second one. You can actually put it in a specific module if you want. So for example, we'll put it in module one and you can say where you want it to appear in that module. Uh, before a certain one that's in the module, after or at the bottom, at the top, right? You can really choose. So let's say at the top and you're gonna click copy, okay? So once you have that, you're gonna go ahead and go to the second course, right? So this is my second course section. And if I go to modules, and then go down here, there it is, okay? It's been added to this second section. And so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because it's not where I want it to be. You can obviously move it around as well. But now let's say that you created the first section and it looks perfect, but now your second section is completely blank. If you go to the second section and go to the settings there, then you can just click on the right here, import course content. And so as you can see here, this is stuff that I've copied from my first into my second. So you're gonna select one, copy a Canvas course, and then select the course. Now, you can say all content, and that means it's gonna copy all of the content from your first section into your second. If not, you can do specific content as well, okay? And so you do that, you click import, and now your second section will look exactly like your first section with of course the difference of students that you have in that class. You can also do select specific content and click import. And when it does that, you'll see here waiting for selection. And so you could just click select content and you go throughout the first section and you click what is it that you want imported into your second one. And so you can get very specific here as far as what to include. I'm curious, do you teach multiple sections of the same course? Let me know in the comments below. But you know, here are the two sections of the same course that I teach. And so if I go here to the ellipses, then I can make some changes here. So I can nickname the course. So maybe, for example, composition one. And then I can click a color to go over the image that I have. And I'll show you how to do that image in a second. So let's say I apply it here. Now we have composition one. And then I can do here. And I can say composition Two, and I have you know another color that goes over it let's say this one and then apply that and now it's much easier to tell the difference because one and two are actually in the title that is displayed 
but also I can see the color as well. Obviously is different. I chose a brighter one for the course I teach first earlier in the day and then a darker one for the second course I teach in a day. So that's one way of doing that. Now as far as this actual image, so let's say if I go to composition one and I go to my settings, you can go ahead and click an image here. And so I just use a free stock photo from a free site, but you can choose whatever you'd like to be the image that appears. Whether you're teaching the same course in different sections or not, the studio tool here would obviously be great for creating video lessons. I am planning on doing an intro video each for each module, so each week, as well as I'm sure various video lectures as well throughout the semester. And so if you go to studio, you can go ahead and record or add videos, right, from YouTube or from your own computer. But you can click record and then screen capture or do a, web, a webcam capture. And so you can go ahead and do your video recording in your actual LMS versus doing it on Loom or doing it in QuickTime and then adding it after the fact. Though if you do want to use Loom or QuickTime, I do have videos on those as well. But just I wanted to let you know that you know there is the studio option for video creation as well as adding videos that already exist. Another tool that I just want to point out before we wrap up is the attendance one. So this lists all your students and a certain day of the week. And so my recommendation here, you can obviously click more and do students individually. But what I plan on doing is marking all as present and then going down the list and saying, okay, like, are you here? Are you here? And for those who aren't, for them, click more and then say, actually, you know, they're not here and do that little X instead just to make the experience much faster than going individually more and more and more and more throughout the attendance in the beginning of the class period. Just mark them all as present and then you can just unmark the ones who are actually absent. If you haven't clicked like yet, do so now. And again, comment below if you have anything about Canvas that you want me to cover in a future episode because I don't have any currently planned at the moment. I've put the playlist on the screen here so you can get to it easily and watch those other four videos, as well as another video that I think you'll find helpful for online teaching.